Today we've got your full in-depth review on this little marvel. It's the 35mm f0.95 from Seven Artisans. It's a fully manual and budget-friendly lens with tons of value and definitely worth a second look if you're into this type of thing. Here's some specs on it to get you going. If you haven't seen one of my videos, my name's Stefan Malik. I do a lot of photography and filmmaking news reviews and tutorials. So if you do enjoy this type of content and you like this video, make sure you hit that like and subscribe button and join the community. Anyways, who do I recommend this lens for? Definitely not a beginner. Being a fully manual lens, it can be a little bit frustrating. So it's gonna be great for a hobbyist or professional that just wants to fool around and get some pretty neat and decent results. Anyways, we're gonna dive in as usual, checking out this lens in its entirety, starting with the build and features. Okay, so a quick look at what comes in the box reveals the bare minimum, and I'm talking bare. It does come decently packaged, it feels pretty good, but all it includes is the lens itself and a small instruction manual. Not even a lens hood, it does include a front and rear cap, and that's pretty much it. The all metal construction of this lens feels pretty decent in the hand and it's very small for what it is, measuring only a two and a quarter inches long, but do note that it will extend as you change your focus all the way up to two and five eighths inches long. The metal construction does contribute to its weight of 369 grams or about 0.81 pounds. Overall, it does feel well built, and remember that it is a completely manual lens, so you will have to change the focus as well as the aperture control completely by hand. There are no buttons or switches on this lens, and on the front you'll find 52mm filter threads. On the back you'll find a nice dark metal mount, kinda neat to see something different, as well as no electronic connections whatsoever, so your camera most likely won't even register that there's a lens attached to it. It is a nice tight fitting lens, but do be aware there is no little rubber gasket for additional weather sealing when you're outside. The focus ring is quite stiff and requires a few hand turns to go from minimum to maximum focus distance. The aperture ring is also quite stiff, and one downside for me is that it doesn't have any hard stops on it, and I do find myself bumping it from time to time, which is a little bit annoying. As you know, this lens does have an incredible maximum aperture of f0.95 and a minimum aperture of f16. Internally, it has 11 elements and 8 groups and does have an impressive 12 aperture blades. Overall, for build and features, it's quite solid and I give it 4 stars. Next up, let's have a look at the value of this lens. And at only 250 US dollars, I'd have to say that this lens is full of value. Manual lenses definitely aren't for everybody, but for people that do like to use them, there's a ton of value in this one. These days there are several other third party options available, but nothing really comparable at this price point. I think Seven Artisans has put together a great little package that's full of value, and for me, I give this thing 4.5 stars. So now we're gonna dive in and see exactly how this thing performs, and it's important to keep your expectations in line, of course, because of the price point and what this lens is. Now, having an incredibly fast maximum aperture of f0.95, it's gonna be capable of some beautiful background separation, some beautiful bokeh, and an incredibly shallow depth of field. And I mean incredibly shallow. This is what really makes this lens frustrating when you're shooting wide open without autofocus. It's really, really hard to actually nail the focus that you want every time. So plan on shooting a lot. Consider shooting in burst mode when you're using this lens if you really need the shot and just rocking back and forth either direction to try and nail that focus if need be. The minimum focus distance of this lens is 0.37 meters or about 14 and a half inches. So you can get relatively close to your subject, but also all the way out to infinity. And the 35 millimeter focal length is quite natural looking, so it's gonna be great for a lot of use cases. The overall bokeh quality with 12 aperture blades is quite good, but like any lens, it is gonna come down to personal preference. For me, it is quite pleasing. Here's a more detailed look at the sharpness and optics of this lens. This is wide open here at f0.95. Nothing to write home about, a lot of inconsistencies, and this is kind of what I expect at this price point. As you can see here, it's not consistent across the board. Now I might be a tiny bit off when it comes to focusing as it is quite difficult to get it perfect every time, but it is kind of weird that 
here in the frame there is some decent sharpness and overall contrast where on this side you can see a little bit of chromatic aberration coming in already as well as some ghosting and a little bit of softness but also in here in the corners you can see that it's back to being not so good. So there's really not that much consistency across the board here. But as we stop down, here we are at F1.4. You can see a tiny bit of an improvement and for some reason a little bit sharper here in the corners than the center. And continuing down F2 and F2.8, we can finally start to see some decent overall image quality from the center all the way into the corners but it's not gonna be really till about F4 here that we start to see some really impressive sharpness, as well as some contrast improving. And continuing to stop down, we can see further improvements down here at F8 now looking pretty good, and F16 as well completely usable, but as far as the performance wide open, which is really why we buy these lenses, definitely don't expect any miracles because, well, you're just not gonna get them. Having a look at the distortion and vignetting here, we can see some distortion happening absolutely and a bit of vignetting which quickly disappears as we stop down here to f1.4. The distortion is there but by no means a deal breaker for me. When it comes to flare, this lens does not perform particularly well and one of the things contributing to that is the lack of the lens hood included. So if that is a worry for you, maybe consider picking one up from Amazon. It's also worth mentioning that this lens does suffer from some focus breathing pretty badly as well as you can see here. So if you are planning to use this lens for video, you might wanna keep that in mind. Overall, in terms of sharpness and optics, this lens is absolutely adequate for the price point and for performance as a whole, it's decent and I give it three and a half stars. Okay guys, so wrapping up my review of this lens, what are my overall thoughts? It's not for everybody being a manual lens, but it does have some interesting character and I quite enjoy using it. As always, here's my personal pros and cons for this lens. If you are a subscriber, you also know that I like to rate things on a scale from never think about again to consider to definitely buy. And if you are looking for an interesting, incredibly fast manual lens on a budget, well, this one might just be perfect for you. I'd consider it. So there you have it guys, there's my full in-depth review of the 35mm f0.95 from Seven Artisans. As you saw, pretty neat and decent little lens for what it is. Great budget option and I would completely recommend it to you. If you do want to pick it up, I will drop affiliate links down below for you. Thanks so much for watching guys. If you did enjoy it, make sure you hit that like and subscribe button and join the community. And like always, make mistakes, be yourself and get out there and take some more pictures. See you next time.